Hello, I am Omid Arabian. I am the director of Universal Center, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the study of mysticism. And I have the pleasure of standing here at Advocacy Gallery in downtown LA with the incredible works of Muhammad Barrangi. Advocacy is a platform dedicated to contemporary artists of Iranian origin. And Mr. Barangi is a master printmaker who currently lives in the UK. This series is inspired by Mantelotair, a poetic masterpiece written by the Persian mystic Attar in the 12th century. Mantelotair, or Conference of the Birds, is an allegorical tale about an epic quest taken on by all the birds of the world. The story begins as the birds gather for a conference. One by one they arrive in their glorious costumes, colorful feathers, magnificent crowns, and resplendent tails. The birds decide that like any nation, the nation of birds needs a ruler, a king who can bring order to their world. From amongst them, the hoopoe steps forward and addresses the other birds. The hoopoe, a wise and knowing bird who has traveled the world and been a trustee of the wise King Solomon, suggests that the community of birds already has a king, an eternal ruler, a legendary bird named Seymour, who lives beyond the mountain chain that encircles the known world. Hupo tells the birds a story of how life as we know it began when one of Seymour's feathers fell onto the face of the earth one night. From this feather came everything beautiful and meaningful, all the vitality that is and will ever be. By the end of Hupo's tale, all the birds are fired up and ready to begin the long and arduous journey. But one after another, unwilling to let go of their various attachments and afraid to leave behind what they have in pursuit of an unknown, the birds try to excuse themselves from the expedition and remain in their familiar spaces, patterns, and pursuits. One after another, they are compelled by the hupo to see the folly of their ways, the smallness of their ambitions, and the illusory nature of their fears. When they ask the hupo what the journey will be like, the hupo lays out a flight plan that will inevitably take them through seven valleys. Each valley will bring the birds one step further along the process of transcendence, of relinquishing their false selves and merging with all that is, just as a drop merges with the ocean. But each valley is also fraught with its own obstacles and challenges which will push the birds to the edge of their endurance. Nevertheless, the birds do set out together, emboldened by the passionate yearning in their own hearts and entrusting themselves to the leadership of the wise hupo. But the hardships of the journey overtake many a bird and continue to reduce their ranks. Some of the birds succumb to physical challenges like heat, hunger, and thirst. Others are taken by predatory animals, and still others are distracted and diverted along the way. Many birds encounter strange and marvelous sights that leave them mesmerized, frozen in place, and many more drop out due to sheer exhaustion and depletion of will. In the end, 
out of hundreds of thousands of birds, only 30 make it to the palace of Simorg. Battered and bruised, they enter the palace and await an audience with their immortal king. As Simorg finally enters, the birds are first blinded by an otherworldly light. But then their eyes adjust, and when they look closely, the 30 birds see Morg, recognize themselves as Simorg, and see Morg as themselves. They realize beyond the shadow of a doubt that all along it was their own true, divine, magnificent, sovereign self that they were seeking. مهو او گشتند آخر بر دوام سایه در خورشید گم شد و سلام like a shadow that vanishes in sunlight at last the birds dissolve forever into sea more and that is the end